Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to Mac and Creeps. We're going to read the epilogue of book one. I'm going to leave you guys on a bit of a cliffhanger this week. But stay tuned, because I'll explain why, and I'll explain what's going on. My girlfriend and I eventually moved into our own apartment. Life has been normal for a while. I still wake up in the night feeling rough sometimes. The feeling makes me suspicious. I wonder if the entities are coming more often than I'm aware. I wonder if I have finally gotten to the point of being comatose when they come. After all, I did watch the aliens do several things to my family, and they were none the wiser. Is it far-fetched to think that maybe my immunity to the aliens' comatose serum has worn a little, only allowing me to be awake during their visits on a hit-and-miss basis? I have no way of knowing anything for sure. You might think I would appreciate not experiencing every visit, and I must say, I did have some appreciation for not being terrorized every night, but it still left a lot of questions for me, a deep void inside of me filled with mystery. I was always getting out of bed with paranoia in the night. A feeling of panic and anxiety would often wash over me. I would have no explanation for the feelings. It wasn't like I would wake from a bad dream. It was more like my body was calming down from an adrenaline-filled experience, an experience I had no recollection of. I would often excuse myself to another room, checking my body for signs of experimentation. My girlfriend, by this time, was aware of my connection to the unknown. She had never had any comment on the subject. As far as she was concerned, the topic was not to be broached in her presence. I have found that a handful of people seem to be afraid of hearing about my experiences, acting like a child wanting to avoid a horror film. I don't know if my girlfriend was afraid or not. I just know she was adamant about not hearing any details about the dark side of my life. Whenever I did wake up between 2 a.m. and 4 a.m., I could rarely fall back to sleep. I would almost always wait for the clock to roll past four before returning to bed. I would often watch TV or just pace my home. I just couldn't feel at ease until the entity's time window had passed. It was a little refreshing to go from being terrorized almost nightly to just a hit-and-miss basis. But the long stretch of having few encounters would abruptly end I don't know if my actions caused the alien encounters to pick back up. I just remember things had started getting a little better. Then the aliens finally slipped up, causing me to react instinctively. My girlfriend and I both work day shift. We usually stay up until around 11 at night before going to bed. This particular night was an ordinary weeknight. All the lights in the two-story apartment are off, excluding the bathroom light. I have convinced my girlfriend I need the light in case I use the restroom in the night. A faint glow coming under the bedroom door is better than no light at all. We go to sleep in our room upstairs. I wake up for no apparent reason. I am lying on my stomach with my face resting on my arm. I lift my head from my arm to give the room a quick scan. The street light shining through the window and the glow from under the door provide enough light to satisfy my curiosity. Once I see there is no threat in the room, I situate myself closer to my girlfriend. She is lying flat on her back. Her head is resting on her pillow. I rest my leg over her legs to get comfortable. Then I throw my arm over her torso. I am surprised when the back of my hand hits something soft. It feels like I just hit my girlfriend's arm, but my hand is around her arm. My girlfriend's right arm is on the edge of the bed, with my hand wrapped around it, but I feel another arm against the back of my hand. I release my girlfriend's arm and wrap my hand around the arm next to hers. I am beyond confused at this point. I have also just woken up from a deep sleep, adding to the confusion. I move my hand up and down the second arm, 
As I move my hand along the mysterious arm, my thumb is between it and my girlfriend's arm. Sliding my hand up and down the strange arm, I reach what feels like a shoulder. I finally realize the extra arm is attached to something crouched beside the bed. The arm seems to be wrapped in a silk-like sleeve. I move my hand back down the arm, stopping at his bent elbow. I'm certain this thing has been crouched down, hoping I am half asleep. I'm sure this thing has been banking on me mistaking his arm for my girlfriend's. It moves slowly, pulling downward, trying to escape my grasp. With a knee-jerk reaction, I reach further down, catching the elbow of the mysterious arm. I grasp the arm tight as it jerks frantically to get free. I am filled with adrenaline and shock. After all these years, I have finally got the tiger by its tail. To be continued. All right, everybody. So I made this video shorter because I'm hoping to make two short videos and have a video ready before next weekend. I've got to go on a trip next weekend. I'm hoping if I can have a video ready for next weekend, then I'll probably be going on a trip next weekend for the whole weekend. And what I need to do is have a video ready by then. So if I can do these two short videos, and have the prologue ready for next weekend i can go ahead and have it scheduled to post i'm really sorry about the whole cliffhanger thing i mean that's how it worked out in the books i left the cliffhanger in part one the next video i'll probably just start from the very beginning of the uh, experience not the whole epilogue but the beginning of the experience i'm pretty sure that's where the epilogue took off also i'm sorry about if my voice sounded bad this week I got some trolls lately talking about my voice, talking about I should hire somebody to do this. And believe me, I would love to be able to afford to pay someone else to do this. I'm very aware that I'm no uh, James Dean. <laughs> I'm no Morgan Freeman. <laughs> so uh, I'm sorry about my voice. Uh, the trolls have caused me to be a little more aware of it this week. So I think that I might have done worse this weekend. I do want to talk about the waking up. So the way that it works, I'll go ahead and, and talk about this because I, I talk about it a little more later on, but I'll go ahead and talk about this. When these things come and they do things to you in the night, what they do is they prick your arm with something and you'll, I'll talk more about this in book two. But they prick your arm, and they have, I don't know, you know, I, I don't want to say they have to, but they will stay until you are up and moving around. I don't know if whatever they do to you, they want to make sure that they don't kill you. <laughs> like, that's always been the feeling I've gotten. That's how come whether I was awake when they were leaving or awake while they were there, one of the entities would always stick around until I was completely up and out of bed or I went to the restroom or just up. And my suspicion of that was always, oh, well, whatever they done, they want to make sure that they're not leaving people dead. <laughs> Maybe uh, I'll talk about one of my brother's stories that always had me suspicious about uh, the whole making sure that somebody's alive before they leave and one more thing everyone so i've been getting emails just two or three people are wanting my permission to share my stories and stuff and right now i'm not comfortable with that because i you know this is a mission for me this is something i've taken very serious and on top of that books don't write themselves you know my my content here is 100 percent original you can scour the whole internet and stories like this begin overlapping on other people's content other people's pages creepypastas all that my stories are original i experience them nobody else is telling these stories but me so my answer to 
people who are just wanting to copy and paste my stories for their channels, their websites, or whatever, is no. And that's uh, that's my short answer. I do have a longer answer for them. But as my viewers, I ask you guys and gals if you see anyone who is uh, marrying my stories or telling my stories somewhere else, I would appreciate it if uh, you guys came to me and let me know in the comments or email me or something to let me know. I don't have the resources to scour the internet looking for other people telling my stories. That's just something I wanted to put out there for my uh, the, our community here at Mac and Creeps. Thanks everyone. I'm sorry for the cliffhanger, but uh, I'm really hoping to take this trip next weekend. So uh, I'll talk to everyone later. Thanks for everything. Thank you guys so much. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe, the usual. <laughs> Thanks everybody. You've been listening to Mac and Creeps. Aliens, monsters, and the supernatural. A true story of a terrorized life.